So Brenda, we had you gave me an email, and you had what I call an impossible healing. Impossible meaning that this is not the typical thing you healing you find with um, man-made techniques. Okay. Correct. All right. And it had to do with your arm. Yes, and you yes. had an injury 36 years ago? Yep. I right, talk correct. about that for a minute, could you? Yeah, I was um, uh, an hourly employee at a General Motors factory, and I was pinned in a machine that malfunctioned. And it pinned uh, the whole upper right shoulder as I was bent over, and as I pulled out from under it, it dragged all the way down this right arm, and I ended up with years of troubling issues. I ended up having a surgery and uh, got some of the use of my arm back and such, but it's it's been something to always kind of uh, be careful of. Yeah, okay. So, so it's been an ongoing thing. You even used EFT tapping, our earlier versions of it, yes. with yes. some good results once yes. upon a time. Talk about that for a moment. Yeah, back in the early 200, it was 2002 when I first started using tapping, uh, this arm was so prevalent in the care of it, caution of how I used it, what I did or didn't do with it. When I started using tapping originally, and they say, you know, use it on yourself, well, that was like at the top of the list was to, to help reduce the discomfort in that arm, whatever I had. Um, and maybe if I overused it, I would use the tapping to bring it back down faster. And I was yeah. getting results like that. But I was always having to do that, too. Yeah. You were at the time, if I remember your emails right, aiming um, at the symptom, that is, you know, the pain and the whatever for your arm. And you were also aiming at a possible cause being anger you had, had held within your system. Yes? Yes. And because we were told to you know, well, how do you feel about the pain, having that pain in your arm and having to live with it, whatever you have lingering? Yeah, so I was big time into how do you feel about that pain? How do you feel about still having to address it? And, you know, because I eventually, if I'm talking like a therapist, it's because I went on to develop a clientele and, and a business and started helping people with this. So I was, I, I was in that mode of, okay. of looking for the emotional contributor. To yes. it. Some of your videos from the trainings, you know, of course, brought that in. Yeah. And there's a, there's a skill, if not an art, to getting mm -hmm. down to what the real cause is you know, and, and so on. So, okay. Now, fast forward a little bit. <laughs> I, I came up with um, The Unseen Therapist. You read my introductory book to it. And then a little over a week ago, you read it again one night. Mm -hmm. This is the you know the spiritual approach to healing. Okay? Yeah. yeah, and um, then the next day, tell us say what happened the next day. Well, the next day, I was reviewing the very end of the book again, and my sister came into the room at the end. Is that the part you want to hear about? Is so my sister came in the room with the giggles afterwards. I don't know if you want well, to hear we, that. We can, we can put it in. Yes, that's not part of the main story, but just right. put it in. Yes, it's an, it's important, it's an important yeah. thing. So I was at the tail end of reviewing the, 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 the last part of the new book, the uh, Optimal EFT, where the personal peace procedure, and it's something I've been trying to get my sister involved in. So I asked her, she's got chronic back pain due to scoliosis, and I asked her to sit down. This is all fresh in my mind. I've just been reading the book and all that stuff. Yeah. I said, sit down, you know, have a seat. You know, let, let's just do a little bit here. It just takes a minute. I just said, just take a minute. Just sit down. And so she sat down, gave me a number for her back pain, which was somewhere around. She says, well, I just got up. I haven't done very much. She goes, maybe about a four. And I said, I can do a four. Let's do a four. Okay. So I did optimally EFT. And brought in the unseen therapist. Well, the whole thing took like 30 seconds to a minute. And I said, okay, now open your eyes. Because I had her close her eyes to just relax, you know. She opened her eyes and she began to giggle. And I said, are you okay? <laughs> she said, no way. She says, how can this be? And she just kept giggling. And then she couldn't speak because she was giggling. It was like she was so overwhelmed by the surprise of the results we got that quick. She just sat there giggling. Meaning her pain was zero or thereabouts? Yes, it was gone. 
Okay. And I said, well, go ahead and stand up. So she stood up, and she's still giggling. She just couldn't believe it could happen that fast. Okay. Now, thank you for that. Um, uh, Brenda, what you were doing there, well, first of all, for those who may not know who would be listening in, scoliosis is a, is a curvature of the spine. It's a very severe yeah. curvature of the spine. Often starts clear into childhood and limits. She, she used to wear a 23-hour brace at the age of 12. Okay. That's, right. Yeah, she said so, it all her life. Serious kind of issue. Now, you also aimed, and we're getting out to something that's important with our impossible healing with you, et cetera. Although this, by the way, is impossible because I don't know any man-made method in 30 seconds can, can turn this kind of a pain to a zero, okay? Right. Um, but, uh, so, so you aimed basically at the symptom, the back pain. Right. Okay. Right. And magic happens. Okay. Right. All right. Now, um, you were doing a similar thing with your arm previously, but after this thing with your sister then. Right, right. The, the right. next day, you are doing something with your arm. I was cleaning the windshield off the car. I yes. was cleaning bugs off the windshield. A, a Just a simple, normal kind of everyday kind of thing everybody tends yeah. to do. Yeah. Okay, so what happened? And, and then I, I was just about done. It was being stubborn, and I was having to scrub, and I finally decided I'm done, and I – turn the squeegee and I go to clear the water off the windshield and this most intense, sharp, burning sensation from the tip of my elbow all the way to the end of my fingers. I don't know if I yelled, but I'm thinking I did because it, I was like something I'd never experienced before. The most intense, sharp shooting pain. And if, and it didn't stop. It, didn't, it wasn't a one-shot thing. As I brought my arm down, just the weight of my own forearm was painful, so I had to hold my arm with my other hand. I had no idea what was happening. It was like a snap or something or a tear. And you ended up with a brace on it, as I recall. Well, I went home and found a brace to immobilize because what I found is that if I even moved these fingers the tiniest bit, that shooting, horrible, burning, whatever that was happening, it was bad. I had to immobilize these fingers. And if I recall it right, but correct me if I'm wrong, that's the worst pain you've had with that since the accident itself. Even during the accident, I don't remember this kind of pain. Okay, all right. Even after the surgery, I don't remember that kind of pain. This was the most intense I'd ever had in that arm, period, ever. Okay, all right. Yeah. All right, so, so there you are. You, made, you actually made an appointment with a doctor. You thought something mechanically was really wrong, and you better yeah. go get it fixed and all of that. And you had, if I remember your emails right, three hours – uh, between then and doctor's appointment. Yes. Uh, so you might as well bring an unseen therapist. Yeah, I'm, uh, yes. <laughs> it's the time I had, so yeah. All right. Yeah. So then what happened? So I sat down on the couch. I was all by myself in the living room, and I began to focus, do some deep breathing, found my loving spot what, that I always focus on when I'm ready to get started. And when I began to think about this event, the the accident, all of a sudden it dawned on me that when I've ever done that part before, I used to put it in a box that had anger written on it. Yes. It changed my life drastically. But the box said anger. There was no other emotion. And this day, I realized I started to pull it apart. And I had all these other emotional pieces in there that I never identified before. And let me, because you gave them to me in an email, let me list sure. them here. You, you took it apart, and this is an important thing for people listening in that are students here, okay? This is it right there. Yeah. This is it. You took it apart, and so it wasn't just anger now. Now, mm -hmm. and by the way, uh, in my experience, unseen therapist is now pointing these things out to you whether you recognize it or not, okay? Mm -hmm. I can't prove that, but that's what happened. But anyway, what came up was fear, being a victim. Regret, humiliation, being misunderstood, shame, guilt, and sadness, as well as, as the anger. Mm -hmm. So you had time, and I think you said like 15 minutes or something, you were addressing each of those pieces yeah. Yeah. As, as contributors? Yes. And, and yeah. then, then what? And I remember very, I want to say this part because this was an experience I'd not had. It was a whole new level for me with the optimal EFT, is that as I would... You know, after you focus on the issue and you t 
take that emotional thing in the heart and let the unseen, ask the unseen therapist to come in, please find the result with this for me. And I just visualize in my heart that that's where it is and that it flushes through. I would feel, I've been trying to come up with a word for you today. I'm trying to figure out what this feels like. And it feels like a swooning almost. Swooning. Yes. I yeah. almost feel lightheaded, like a little swooning. I would feel just a little something like this almost. And then it would, then it would pass. And then I open my eyes and I go, well, okay, next. And I go on to the next emotion and I would just keep going and keep going and keep going. And in 15, 20 minutes, I, I was sitting there after one of these swoonings and one of the emotions on the list, and I opened my eyes and I heard my, my partner coming down the hallway and looked over at me and said, so how's it going? How are you doing? And I raised my hand and went, we're doing just fine. <laughs> and I had tears in my eyes. I was wiggling my fingers. I was moving my arm. I was, the pain was completely gone. It wasn't just better. It was gone. And my partner was in tears as well. Because and that was a week ago or so, and it's still it's still gone. gone. There's nothing. There's nothing there. Okay. There's nothing there. And you didn't go to the doctor. I didn't. I canceled the doctor. I had to even arrange for a ride to get to the doctor. I canceled the ride. I called. Canceled the doctor appointment. It was done. It, okay. And it worked for me this time because I've always had, I've had that little syndrome that therapists have that it always works for everybody else, but it's hard to make it work for yourself. And it was done. Well, that's because there's some challenge in seeing really your own issues. Yeah, yeah. There is yeah. a challenge. And we all have, I have it. Everybody has it. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. One of those things. But we can get it done for ourselves. It takes practice and diligence yeah. and all that kind of yeah. thing. So, okay. Um, that's that's um, one of those things. I thank you, Brenda, because that kind of experience while not everybody has it just that way, just that dramatically, et cetera. It's one of our possibilities. And to me, um, I think anybody who has any kind of a disease or other kinds of issues um, should, with their doctors, okay, I have to say that, okay. But before, or even with, taking the drugs, the surgeries, and other things that are aimed at trying to take care of these problems. Try this first. You may avoid all the rest of it. In fact, often mm -hmm. we completely avoid the rest of it, which you just did. Okay. Okay. If you had gone to the doctor, of course, I don't, I don't know this for sure, but chances are you'd have been given some pills, maybe scheduled for a surgery. I don't know. I don't know. But none of that became necessary. And so what I'm saying is let's do this first. If it doesn't work, okay, we've got a, a backup mm -hmm. medical thing to do. Mm -hmm. So on. So anyway, that's my view. That's my view. <laughs> so. Well, I will tell you this, Gary. Since that that event, it's got me. I've been a very active, kind of a clumsy, um, um, tomboy, if you will. And I've had a lot of injuries. I've sprained both wrists more and both ankles so many times. I can't even tell you. So I have some chronic things there. And since the results on this, it's opened the door to things that I didn't even think about trying to go after before. Yeah. And now I'm working on all kinds of things, sinuses and, and arthritic pain or the kind, you know, they say you have to have when you get older. Well, I'm sorry, I'm not buying that anymore. <laughs> and, you know, I've been hearing, you know, I've been watching your videos and, and things like people correcting vision and sinus issues and allergies. Now the sky's the limit. I mean, all of a sudden I'm, I'm, make, I'm re revisiting my list. Yeah, in my, yeah, you know my my uh, personal peace procedure, and adding to the list, and things are good. Things are getting better, and things are good. Okay. So. Brenda, delightful, just wonderful. Thank you, thank you so much. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. I'm glad to share it.